Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will going to show how to install Kali Linux 2025.1a. So let's start. So we get the first update of Kali Linux this year. So the new version of Kali Linux is available on the official website of Kali. I will give the official website link in the description below. So first of all, you have to download the Kali Linux installer according to your hardware. Now here you can choose your Kali according to your needs, like virtual machines, mobile cloud, live boot, WSL, ARM containers, etc. Here I am choosing the installer image option. Now an installer image. You can download the ISO image according to your system. You can select 64-bit architecture, 32-bit architecture, or Apple architecture. Now download the Kali Linux ISO image. You can download directly from a web browser or you can use a torrent. I have already downloaded the 64-bit Kali Linux installer, so I skipped this part. Now the second step is to download an application that helps you create a bootable USB drive. You can use the Bellina Etcher to create a bootable USB drive. It is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Here I am using the Windows operating system. I have already downloaded Bellina Etcher and Kali ISO image. So this is the Kali Linux 2025.1 AISO image. Now open the Bellina Etcher application and follow the steps. Now click on Flash and File and select your downloaded Kali Linux 2025.1a installer image. Now connect your USB drive to your computer. Here you have to select the USB drive that you want to bootable. Your USB drive is at least 8 gigabytes. Now here you can see my Kali Linux ISO and USB are connected with Bellina Etcher. Now click on Flash to make a bootable USB drive. Bellina Etcher is a free and open source utility used for writing image files, such as .iso and .img files, as well as zip folders onto storage media to create live SD cards and USB flash drives. Now, the Bellina Etcher application makes your USB bootable. If you want to make a bootable USB drive in Mac OS and Linux, please comment below. Now reboot your system and boot your machine from a USB drive. In my case, I have a second system, so I will switch the system here. In the BIOS setting, you have to make a USB as the first boot device. Or, you can press the function key to go boot menu. In my case, I will get the USB as first boot device in my system. Here I am selecting these options. And here I am going with you EFI mode. Now Kali Linux installer menu is here. I am using UE FI mode in this tutorial. Now the first step is to install Kali Linux 2025.1a. Here you have to select the option of how you want to install your Kali. I choose here graphical install. Now here you have to select the preferred language you want for your system. Now select your location. It is based on the language you selected. Now here you have to select your default keyboard layout. It detects the installation media and loads the additional components. I am using an Ethernet connection in my system. But if you are using a Wi-Fi interface, then you will get here a window where you have to choose your Wi-Fi. Now here you have to enter the host name for this system. You can set up your name. I will keep the default Kali. Now, here you can set up your domain name. Otherwise, leave it empty. Now set up the full username for the system. Now here set up a username for your account. Now set up a strong password for your Kali Linux users. Now we have to create the partitions here. I am creating partition manually, so I select the manual option here. Now we have to know about our partitions. I have EXT and NTFS partition because this is dual boot, where Windows 11 and Kali Linux is installed. I will use in Kali Linux as my primary operating system, so my Windows 10 or 11 and Kali Linux will be deleted permanently along with its data. 
If you want your Windows 10 or 11 operating system, do not follow this tutorial. Click on the I button where you can learn about Kali Linux Dual Boot or Kali on Virtual Machine. So no, we will continue this tutorial. Just double click on the partition and then select the delete the partition option. You have to follow the same process until you delete all these partitions. Delete all partitions one by one with the same process. So now we have 256 gigabytes of space free. Now select free space and click on continue. Or you can also double click on free space. Create a new partition. Now here set the space you want. If you're using UEFI mode, you have to create an EFI system partition. So the first partition is our EFI system partition. Make sure you follow the steps. So here you have to choose the EFI system partition option. So this is the EFI partition. Now select the done setting up the partition option here and click on continue. And now our second partition is swap partition. So again, follow the same steps. Here you have to set the size between four gigabytes to eight gigabytes. And this partition is our swap partition. So here you have to select the swap area option. Now select the done setting up the partition option here and click on continue. The swap partition serves as overflow space for your RAM. If your RAM fills up completely, any additional applications will run off the swap partition rather than RAM. Now our third and last partition is slash the root directory partition. Follow the same steps. Now I am using the rest of the size. But this partition minimum of at least 20 gigabytes, select the primary partition here. Now here file system is the extension for and the mount point is slash. Now our partition part is done. Select this option and click on continue. Here verify the partition's information and select the yes option and click on continue. Now your base system is installing in your system. You have to wait. Now here you have to select the options like which desktop environment you want. The default desktop environment is XFCE. I am going with default settings here. You can choose as you want. Now here selected software is installing in your system. It takes some time to install Kali Linux in your system. Now our Kali Linux 2025.1 installation is completed. Click on continue to reboot your system. So that is it. This is the way how to install Kali Linux 2025.1a on your machine with UEFI mode. Thank you for watching this video and make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on my future videos. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video.